So did your mama tell you what I studied this morning? No, sir. Good. Are we going to breakfast? No. You remember what you was talking to us about at the supper table last night? If you mean about what my teacher was teaching on the other day, yes, sir. Do you remember what you told us? How she just kind of passed over the subject? Isn't she usually pretty thorough? Yeah, she is. She's usually a really good teacher. So I don't think anybody else noticed it. Although she did go on this big spill about how the government was taking away so many people's rights, though. Mm. Well, I want to take you and show you a place. You know, it's been a long time since we've been here. I don't remember ever coming here. When you told me you wanted to take me somewhere today, I thought you were like, drop me in the middle of the woods or something. Like, I don't know, make me a man or something. Yeah, son, there's a handful of things that can make you a man, but starving you in the woods ain't one of them. The reason I brought you here is I wanted you to see this place like I saw it about 12 years ago. So you were like 30 then? Not exactly. I worked here a lot of years ago and a security guard of all things. Shortly after that I met your mother and she became pregnant. And I remember the day she told me. What was wrong with that? Well, see, I was used to a certain lifestyle, living a certain way. And a baby was going to change all that. I, I, I don't understand. Do you know what this place was? Um, I don't know. Was it like an adoption agency or something? Oh. Uh, this was one of those places that they talked about in school where they did abortions. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Women came here for a lot of different reasons. I think most would say that they felt they had no way out, no other way. This was the only way. This place gave them a choice. I'm confused. How could you call this a choice? A, a choice between what? It was a choice between having a child or not. But that's terrible. What kind of people would do that? Such were some of us, son. But there's a bigger concern here, which is why I brought you here today. Do you remember the account of King Hezekiah? Yes, sir. He was the king of Judah. He changed the laws of the land to bought abolish idolatry. Uh, and he also destroy, destroyed the bronze serpent Moses made. Among other things, he was so highly praised in scripture that the Lord said he trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that there was no other king like him in all the land of Judah before or after him. But do you remember his son, Manasseh? No, not really. Well, his son was Manasseh. And as soon as Manasseh became king, he reinstituted all the pagan worship in the land and undid all the reforms that his dad had made. Manasseh's sins were so great that the Lord sent army after army to destroy Judah. Because of all the innocent blood that Manasseh had shed in Jerusalem, the Lord said he would not forgive. 
So this was similar to what happened here? I suppose. It seems that mankind never changes. When we go in cycles, there's nothing new under the sun. But something happened to Manasseh to cause him to repent. The Lord sent a king to take Manasseh in hooks and chains and imprisoned him for a time. And during Manasseh's imprisonment, he humbled himself before the Lord. I, I, I don't understand. What does all this mean? Well, I was like Manasseh. My life, I mean. No way. Not you. Yep. This place here, I worked here years ago. But don't you have to be a doctor to work here? Well, not all jobs here were that way. I guarded this place. You guarded this place? Yes, I guarded this place. What were you guarding against? Well, not everybody around here agreed with the practice. Uh, they were opposing it in the name of God. But you follow God. As I said, I, I didn't always. Well, then what happened to change your mind? God used you as an instrument to break my hard heart and to draw me to Him. You've heard me speak of your grandpa. Yes, sir. You've always said he was a good man. Well, I didn't always think that way. See, I thought he was a fanatic. I always preaching the gospel. I always telling folks about Jesus. I always helping others in the name of the ministry. I despised him for that. He was always telling me my need of Jesus. Well, I had a job. I had my own job. Got my own place. I met your mother during that time. She became pregnant. We weren't ready for that at all. Economically, emotionally, socially. We felt like we had nowhere else to go. No other choice. Choice like to have a child or not? Wait, no way. Well, it seems like all that gospel preaching had taken root at one time. We didn't have nowhere else to turn, it seemed. We, we had no other choice. This was the only thing we could do except these words, but God being rich in mercy with the great love with which he loved us kept ringing in my ears over and over and over. So you didn't go through with the abortion? What a fellowship, what a joy you said that I'd come here before. When had I ever come here? You came here with your mother. <laughs>